right, here we are with some more fun facts. The first is, which is a parliament? Geese, number one. Number two, crows. Number three, owls. So think about that for just a moment. Which is called a parliament, a group of? So like a herd of cattle, what would be a parliament of? geese is it a parliament of crows or a parliament of owls and the correct answer is owls number three owls are generally solitary but when seen together the group is called a parliament as they have long been considered to be of a wise disposition that picture is so cute of those owls i love it in Greek mythology, the owl is the symbol for Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Okay, a couple side facts. So if you're interested in what the geese would be called, they would be called a gaggle. So a group of geese is a gaggle. And a group of crows, this one's fun, a group of crows is called a murder of crows. can't think of any others off the top of my head. I know that there are some interesting ones out there. Parliament of Owls, though. So some side facts about the burrowing owl in particular. We actually had these by our house a few years back, and they were a little bit closer to our neighbor's house. And our neighbors actually called us and said, don't tell anybody about the fact that these are here because it's going to just uh, enact a lot of in excitement and um, have a lot of people coming over to our place all the time and we just don't want that so we said okay we'll keep it on the down low even though you're I think supposed to report it to some society <laughs> of some kind but um, they were really cute. Uh, so burrowing owls are uh, active during the day and we did see them. They were very active going about their business. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if they were making a nest or what, but they were very active doing something. Uh, it says on here when I did the research that, um, and this is from defenders.org slash burrowing owls, uh, according to defenders.org, um, they're supposed to make a very loud chuckling kind of noise. I never heard that but uh, when we watched them near our house, but uh, they definitely were active during the daytime. It was interesting. So yeah, we actually, the word did actually um, eventually get out and there were a number of people over by our, closer to our neighbor's house, but um, I can see why they're it it's unusual to see active owls during the day okay next fun fact the first oranges were which color red green or yellow give that a thought for just a second while i check on something so think red green or yellow So the correct answer is green. The original oranges from Southeast Asia were a tangerine pomelo hybrid, and they were actually green. The pomelo or Chinese grapefruit is a pale or green, uh, pale green or yellow. Excuse me. In fact, oranges in warmer regions like Vietnam and Thailand still stay green through maturity. All right, next fun fact, which president served the shortest U.S. presidency? One, William Henry Harrison, two, Gerald Ford, or three, John F. Kennedy? Think about that for just a moment. And the correct 
correct answer is William Henry Harrison. So the ninth president of the United States and he was only in office for one month and what killed him, um, the diagnosis from his doctor was pneumonia and the pneumonia was thought to be a result of his very very long inaugural address in fact it's the longest one in history at 8445 words and he basically uh, delivered this very long inaugural address in wet freezing weather without a hat overcoat or gloves so two records there longest inaugural address and shortest time in office all right next fun fact what was the first feature-length animated film one snow white and the seven dwarves two steamboat lily or three sleeping beauty so think about that for just a moment And the correct answer is number one, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So it's based on a 19th century German fairy tale, uh, originally published in 1812, and it was just called uh, Snee Witchen, numbered as Tale 53. And uh, let's see. The individual names for the doors were given in 1912 in a Broadway play, and then uh, the actual 1937 Disney film is where they gave different names. Seven animated films came before Snow White, but Snow White was the actual first feature-length film. Alright, next fun fact. Which animal's eye is bigger than its brain? One, the tazier. I think that's how you say it. Number two, the ostrich. Or number three, the imbibura tree frog. So think about that one for just a moment. Okay, and the correct answer is number two, the ostrich. The ostrich has the biggest eyes in the whole animal kingdom, where obviously the eye is bigger than the brain of an ostrich. They are, some side facts here, they are the biggest and heaviest bird. They lay huge eggs. One egg is equivalent to 24 chicken eggs in terms of weight. Ostriches are the fastest running bird. They can even run faster than lions or leopards. Very lucky for them. They have very strong legs and this amazed me. One kick can actually kill a lion. And finally, this is pretty amazing to me. A female ostrich can recognize her own eggs even if they are mixed up with other eggs. That is amazing. Okay, next fun fact. Who is regarded to be the first European to land in North America? Is it one, Christopher Columbus, two, Leif Erikson, or three, I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, I don't even know if I pronounced number two correctly, but I'm going to go with Yarni Her. Hofsen. Yarny her Hofsen. Okay, so think about that one, two, or three. And the correct answer is not Yarny her Hofsen. He is credited with being the first to actually cite. North America. 
but not the first to land. That goes to Leif Erikson. So this is an interesting story. So Jarni went to go visit his parents in Iceland. He visited his parents in Iceland every summer, apparently. But one summer in 986, his dad went to Greenland instead. And Jarni um, decided to visit him in Greenland. He had no compass and no map, and he got lost when a storm took them off course. But he spotted some land off in the distance and noticed it was covered in trees and mountains. He knew that that's not what not what Greenland could look like. Um, so he turned away and you know kept trying to look for his father in Iceland. And it turns out that that land that he saw off in the distance when uh, he was searching for Iceland, it was actually Newfoundland, Canada. So he actually spotted North, he apparently spotted North America first, but he didn't actually go there. He went another way. But Leif Erikson is actually the first to be credited with uh, the landing. So first to land in North America, Leif was the son of Eric the Red, who led the settlement of Greenland and um, led an attempt in a thousand AD to settle in Vinland, somewhere on the east coast of Canada. 500 years before Columbus, a daring band of Vikings led by Leif set foot in, in North America and established a settlement. All right, next fun fact. Where is Mount Disappointment located? One, Australia, two, America, three, Canada. And this one's a little bit of a trick question. Uh, there's actually two. Um, when I created this question, I thought it was only in number one, but I found out later that it was actually number two as well. So there's actually Mount Disappointment in Victoria, Australia, that's close to uh, where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Melbourne, so it's fairly close, Melbourne, Victoria. And it was named Mount Disappointment because uh, when they climbed it, essentially the trees prevented them from having um, the view that they wanted, so they were disappointed. So they called it Mount Disappointment. And then the one in California was called Mount Disappointment for a couple different reasons. Essentially, they um, climbed it and found that there was another peak half a mile to the east that was 167 feet higher. It was a disappointment because they thought that they <laughs> climbed the, the highest summit there. And uh, I did some other reading and I found out that uh, it was also called Mount Disappointment because of the the many struggles that they had in climbing it. Um, some injuries were noted and things like that, and just it was not a fun time overall. So Mount Disappointment in Australia and America. Okay, what is the most expensive object ever built? One Air Force One plane two, the International Space Station, or three, the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Take a second to think about this one. All right, the most expensive object, let's first put it into perspective. So the Burj Khalifa 1.5 billion approximately. Uh, the Air Force One, the new 747 Air Force One, um, co will cost over four billion dollars. And NASA estimates the cost of sending astronauts to Mars around 40 billion. So let's go back. 1.5 billion, four billion. Number two is the winner at about 160 billion. So by far the most expensive and apparently those costs are rising as new sections are added. Very few things even come close. Um, just as a side note, the International Space Station is larger than most people realize. It's bigger than a five bedroom house. Uh, it can be seen from the earth with the naked eye largest artificial satellite that has ever orbited Earth. 
$160 billion. And there we go, the most expensive.